Welcome to Make It Happen Monday, my weekly dose of healthy inspiration. If you love your morning cup of coffee like I do, you'll be really pleased to know that we have some important new science uh, shedding some powerful light on what is the healthiest way to brew our coffee. And first of all, I want to remind you that coffee over the last 20 years has emerged as sort of a superstar elixir for good health. Um, we have really powerful uh, data telling us that people that drink coffee regularly uh, get less cardiovascular disease, less dementia, less Parkinson's, less type 2 diabetes, less liver cancer, less suicide, less depression. So it absolutely can fit into healthy living. What is the healthiest way to prepare your coffee? That's the important message here. First of all, let me let you know that we have known for a long time that there are compounds in, in coffee that can raise bad cholesterol. We've also known from studies that filtering the coffee through a paper filter can filter out those uh, cholesterol elevating compounds. And lo and behold, we have a brand new published study, really big study out of Norway that is giving us um, uh, affirmation that this really does make a difference. So what did they do in this study? They enrolled over 500,000, that's a big study, 500,000 adults, um, they queried them about their coffee drinking habits, how they prepared their coffee, and they followed the health status of this 500,000 plus group of people for about 20 years. What they saw was that folks that reported regularly drinking coffee filtered had a 15% decrease in all-cause mortality, all forms of mortality. Specifically, men had, who uh, regularly drank filtered coffee experienced a 12% reduction in their cardiovascular, risk of cardiovascular death, women a 20% reduction. And that was in contrast, that was compared to people that didn't drink coffee. So the coffee drinkers who prepared theirs through a filter had those benefits relative to people that didn't drink coffee. What about people that prepared their coffee without uh, filtering it, unfiltered coffee? Perhaps it was through a press, perhaps it was through a percolator or some other way that didn't send it through a paper filter. Not only did they not experience the reduction in death risk, like the filtered group, men in, in that group above the age of 60 actually had a higher risk of cardiovascular death than people that didn't drink any coffee, okay? So the point here is that um, fil you know, preparing your coffee through some sort of paper filter is what you wanna do. Um, and there's, you know, we now have evidence to show that that does somehow make it better, likely because it is removing those cholesterol elevating compounds. There's a second thing that you need to be aware of in preparing your coffee, and that is, I hope you know that plastics in your food are not, or, or plastics in your beverages are not a good combination, particularly heated beverages or heated foods. Why? Because there are noxious, toxic compounds that we know, things like BPA, BPS, and phthalates, that are liberated from plastics that can make your, their way into your food or beverages, particularly if it's hot, right? So if you are still brewing your coffee through a coffee maker that's got plastic in it, whether the hot water is coming in contact with that plastic or your brewed coffee is coming in, in contact with that plastic, you know, it's, it's not a good idea. What do we know about phthalates, BPA, BPS? They have been um, documented to be endocrine disrupting compounds and have been tied to fertility issues, 
hormone-related cancers, cardiovascular disease, obesity, metabolic issues, uh, type 2 diabetes, amongst other bad things, right? So what is, how can you avoid, you know, the plastics. Well, you're going to brew your coffee. This is, I'm going to show you what we do in my family. Um, either we do individual pour overs and you know, if you hadn't started doing your coffee like this, man, there's no better way for the flavor, no better way for the flavor. We are kind of like coffee, total coffee snobs. I admit it. Complete coffee snobs. We buy really high quality coffee. We, you know, we get the beans, we grind those beans. Anyway, so we either do individual pour overs again, no plastic here, or we use the Chemex. I have no commercial relationships with any of this stuff. And I boil my coffee in this trusty little, um, you know, metal pot there. Anyway, so I hope this uh, gives you some uh, guidance and inspiration to improve the, perhaps improve the way that you're preparing your coffee to get the most out of it. And speaking of healthy habits in the kitchen, I am really excited. I'm thrilled, I'm overjoyed to be able to announce that my Kenshi Companion e-course is going to launch this Wednesday. We have been um, spending lots of time as we shelter in place, creating this course. Um, you probably know from watching my Make It Up on Mondays that, that you know, I'm a big you know, advocate, it, you know, you, you listen, you've got to get comfortable in the kitchen. You've got to make your own food. If you, you know, I mean, if you, if you want to have a prayer, uh, to be healthy, it's simply impossible to have optimal health. Um, unless someone in your household is proficient, uh, in the kitchen, because you can't be eating out and you can't be eating foods prepared by someone else's hands and machines if you want to have robust health. So look forward to that. Um, we are going to send a big email announcement because we're, we are going to offer the first 100 uh, students uh, that enroll. They're going to get a 30% discount um, on that particular e-course. So I, I hope you will join me in the kitchen. Thank you.